Be faithful to see me through every trial. No need to worry, too great for your love. You are the God of more than love. To my Redeemer, to my salvation. Who split wide the sea to liberate me? I will praise you. I will praise you. You are the God of more than enough. Faithful to see me through every trial. Well, hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Mark and Matt here, and we are outside. And I want to remind you, in case you didn't hear or see on our social media, that our Menlo Church app is now available. Make sure you go over to the App Store, go pick yourself up that app. It is loaded with features, tons of great stuff. One of my favorites is how we can seamlessly su- switch from video to audio. So I was watching a sermon earlier, got in my car to come here, click that to listen, and then I podcasted my way over to here. So make sure you go and check that out. And before we jump into the service, I have one question for you, Matt. All right, I'm listening. What is your singing voice like, and do you like to sing? It's a good question. Um, I can tolerate my own voice. Okay. Uh, I don't know about the rest of my family. You'd have to ask them personally, but if I'm alone in the car and cranking music, uh, it's good enough for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, How about you? Uh, Mine is okay. I like to mouth trumpet more than I like to sing, but I do... (laughs) love singing as well. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so why do you ask? Well, today we are talking about worship and how we can connect, connect sometimes our felt emotions or unfelt emotions, words that we can't say, connect them to song, and then talk to God that way. Yeah. Well, I love that. And I love that we're outside like yeah. discussing this right now because it's like with every, you know, breeze that comes by or every tweet of the bird, I feel like all of creation is giving a voice to worship right now. So, so very cool. Yep. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and we're going to kick it over the service now. 
Welcome to Menlo Church. We are so glad that you are here. I use my phone for absolutely everything, like I'm sure most of you do as well, which is why I am so excited that now you can watch and listen to Menlo Church sermons. You can request prayer, you can sign up for events, and you can give to Menlo Church through your phone in our brand new Menlo Church app. This is gonna be your go-to place for getting connected to Menlo Church and staying connected. You can find more information by going to menlo.church app. Another great way for you to get connected is to join us for our virtual town hall on April 25th at 1 p.m. This is gonna be a time for us as a church to come together and to talk about community, to spend some time in prayer, and to uh, just share some important Menlo Church updates. We're gonna hear from several of our elders and our staff about our supplemental investigation, about our senior pastor search, and we're gonna talk about our plans for resuming in-person services. For more details, you can go to menlo.church slash townhall. And lastly, during the month of March, our Menlo San Jose campus opened up its parking lot to provide a safe place for people who are currently living out of their cars to sleep. One of those guests was John. John is working two jobs while living in his car. And this last week, unexpectedly, John's car broke down. As he dropped the car off the mechanic, John realized that he just lost his place to sleep. So he called Menlo San Jose and he said, I'm not gonna be able to join you tonight. Uh, I just don't have a way to get there. So John then went to the store and he found the warmest pair of socks he could knowing that that night he was gonna be sleeping on the street. We were able to call John because of your generosity and your giving to Menlo Church. And we let him know that we reserved a room at a nearby hotel, it was paid for and it was under his name. And that night he would not have to sleep on the street. It's because of you Menlo Church and your giving and your generosity to Menlo Church that we are able to help people like John. So thank you Menlo Church. Because of you, we were able to call John and let him know that he would not be sleeping on the street that night. It's because of you and your giving and your generosity that we are able to help people like John. You can start giving to Menlo Church or you can continue to give to Menlo Church by going to menlo.church give. This week, we are finishing our discussion on joy, and we are doing things a little differently, if you can't tell. Uh, we're sitting here with the fire. I found some random singers on the side of the road, and I am irrationally excited about our topic today. We're talking about one of my favorite things. We're talking about joy and singing. In a little bit, we're going to be partaking in communion together. So this would be a good time to search through your house, through your fridge, and find some goldfish or some crackers and some juice uh, because we will want to uh, commune with you in your living room. Now, before you go to another YouTube playlist or you fast forward, I know some of you, when you hear singing, you say, well, I'm not a singer. Or maybe you say, I don't even like church music. Or maybe say, uh, I've heard a sermon on this topic before. Well, A, you never heard a sermon quite like you're gonna hear today. Uh, B, the kind of singing we're gonna be talking about goes way beyond a church building or church music. And then C, uh, it doesn't matter if you are a professional singer or can sing in tune or not, because we're gonna be talking about an ancient, mysterious practice that God has given us that integrates our bodies and our souls and our emotions. And it might just be one of the keys to chasing joy. So we're gonna start our conversation uh, by talking about crickets and nightingales. So right now you're gonna be hearing some crickets. In the foreground, you'll hear some normal crickets. In the background though, you will hear some crickets being slowed down in their audio. And it's sort of haunting and creepy. And male crickets are the only ones who make this sound. And it's actually quite risky behavior because as they call out to a mate, they're also uh, at risk of calling out a predator. Now, uh, let's listen to some nightingales, okay? We've all heard birds singing, it's amazing. Nightingales are one of the most complex ones. Uh, nightingales typically will have up to 180 songs in the repertoire. I have no clue how they found that out. 
Uh, but nightingales, uh, the, the fathers will sing these songs and the science says that the better the song they're trying to communicate, the better father that they will be. Now humans, we communicate this by our ability to tell dad jokes or wear our socks with sandals. So it's a little different. But why singing? Why music? Why vibrations in the air? The philosopher Immanuel Kant says, if music confers no survival advantage, where does it come from and why does it work? It's mysterious, right? John Lennon, not the beetle, but the retired professor, uh, said most animals use sound to express emotion. Singing is a very basic human need, the need to express emotions in a way that completely satisfies the unified body-mind of each individual. Now, in Silicon Valley, we're not known for expressing emotion. We're more known for our data and engineering things and logic. And then Presbyterians, we're not exactly known for expressing emotion. Maybe you've heard of the descriptor, the frozen chosen. Uh, which uh, implies that as Presbyterians, we are stiff during worship. But the reality is God has created us as complex beings that goes beyond our intellect and our mind and logic down to our hearts and emotions. Uh, There's this old saying that says, when words fail, music speaks. Sometimes words fail. If you were going to uh, ask someone to define love, a newlywed, would be, have a hard time describing the feeling they have for someone else in their heart. Or a parent with a newborn would have a hard time describing the bond they feel internal. Words fail, but music is the language of our soul. It's magical and it's mystical and it's an ancient tool God gave us to express the realities hidden deep within. One of the primary emotions, of course, that singing conveys is joy. Now, you may not know this, but the act of singing actually releases endorphins, which are the brain's feel-good chemicals. Uh, Studies have shown that when a group like us gets together and sings for 30 minutes, your oxytocin levels will increase, which decreases your anxiety and increases the feeling of bonding. The scientists tell us we have uh, an, a structure in our ears that, that help us sing called the saccule. And as we sing, it vibrates and it creates pleasure and calm in us. Then the neuroscientist Daniel Levinton cites over 400 studies that say music has more effect on people's anxiety and cortisol levels than prescription drugs. It's magical. Singing and joy are intimately connected. For example, if I sing this phrase, what happens in living rooms across the country? Sweet Caroline. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> right, singing is contagious. Every wedding reception you've ever been to, every karaoke bar, uh, it's contagious and it's joyful. It integrates our minds, our bodies, our souls, and our emotions. The Israelites understood this magical and powerful tool. In the middle of the Bible, there's these collections of poetry and songs called Psalms. This was the Israelites' hymn book. In fact, Jesus, as a Jewish rabbi, uh, most likely would have known most of these Psalms by heart. There's a collection of Psalms called the Psalms of Ascent. And these Psalms were songs for the journey. Songs for the pilgrimage. You can imagine the Israelites walking hours in the hot sun during the day. Then as the sun set, they'd be sitting in a circle like this together. And they'd have a fire. And they'd start singing these songs that reminded them of where they came from. These songs would be an encouragement and a hope for the future. The music would be a salve that calmed their anxiety. And so we're going to go through one of these Psalms of Ascent because we're all on a journey, chasing joy, good times, bad times. We're going to allow this Psalm to speak into our journey. So let's start together. This is Psalm 126. 
We see this. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter. Our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. So it starts here by speaking of the past, remembering what God has done. And the Israelites had many things to remember, some things brutal, but many glorious. God rescuing them from Egypt, giving them the Torah and Shabbat, uh, providing for them in the desert, giving them a king. Uh, remembering brings us joy often. Uh, this past week, my in-laws were in town and we were around the table and we were eating tacos. And every time we eat tacos, uh, my daughter says, Daddy, tell that, tell that story about you eating tacos when you're in high school. And so I, I tell them, okay, uh, one time in high school, my mom was at the local taco shop and called me and said, how many tacos do you wanna eat? And back then my metabolism was uh, much better than it is now, obviously. <laughs> and I said to my mom, I want 22 tacos. And my mom being the blessed mother that she is, uh, bought me 22 tacos and I ate it, ate all of them in one sitting. And uh, so as I tell that story, my kids, every time they're like, oh, wow. And we all laugh and it's just a joyous moment. And you have these moments with your family and with your friends where you go to each other and you say, remember that time? And you start laughing until you start crying. We remember the joy of life. But then there's the pain of forgetting. Recently, I showed my daughter a picture, this beautiful memory I had of us. We were in a shuttle bus at an airport, taking selfies and being silly. And I showed her this picture and I said, do you remember that? And she just said, no, I don't remember that at all. It like low key hurt my feelings because that was a beautiful memory for me, but she'd forgotten. This is part of why uh, the, the disease Alzheimer's is so brutal because memories and moments are lost, it's painful. Now, interestingly, research has shown that the part of the brain that is linked to musical memories is mostly undamaged by this disease. So music theory has become a way to help folks with Alzheimer's cope. It helps them access their memories again. Music is mystical and mysterious. We remember so we realize we're part of a bigger story. The Israelites, uh, once a year, would have this grand feast. They gather around a table. Uh, they call it the Passover Seder meal. And in this piece, each piece of food and drink would connect to their story, to their past of God rescuing them from Egypt. And uh, there's this song that they would sing, that they still sing to this day around the table. And it's, uh, Dai, Dai, Enu, Dai, Dai, Enu, Die, die, new, die, new, die, new. And it's a, it's a remembrance of all the things that God has done. Even if he just did one of those things, he would be worth praising and worshiping, but he did all of these things. Now later, our rabbi, Jesus, gathered his disciples around a table for this Seder meal. And he spoke of the importance of remembering he was about to perform a new sacrifice, a new freedom. And now he was introducing a new meal to celebrate, a communion. This would be a time to remember what Jesus would do. And our definition of worship that we use, we say we worship God for who he is, and then for what he has done. So in our journey to joy, it's vital that we remember what God has done for us. So right now we're gonna do this together. We're gonna to remember that Christ sacrificed himself uh, for us, for our freedom. So uh, find some elements close to you and uh, we will do this together. So on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus uh, took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body, broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, 
He said, this cup is the cup of my new covenant. It's my blood poured out for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. So right now I wanna invite you to partake in these elements. And as you do, we are going to sing this song and allow this song to be a salve for you to calm your anxiety and help you remember the great things God has done for you.
second portion of uh, Psalm 126. So let's continue. Verse 3, uh, we see the Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Uh, on our journey, we look back at the past and we look forward to the future, but we can only live in one spot, uh, in the present, in this moment. How often we miss the beauty of right now, unaware of what God is doing in this moment. Uh, last week, my wife and I went on a date to San Francisco and we went at 5 p.m. for dinner because we're old and we have kids. It feels like an acceptable time. And after dinner, we found a Michelin rated restaurant to go to dessert to. It's called the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> and we uh, sat over San Francisco and looked out and we talked about our dreams for the future. And we talked about our kids. We talked about our new camper we bought. And it was great. And you'd be tempted to think that this was just a regular date. Uh, but like many of you, this past year, there's been nothing regular about it. Uh, we don't have family in town. Um, we don't have people to watch our kids very often, so we don't get to have dates or have a lot of alone time. And then on top of that, my wife has had quite the year. Uh, she has had five surgeries. She got a rare bacterial infection. And for a while, she got a port in her arm. And three times a week, she would get anti antibiotic uh, infusions in her arm. And then not too long after that, she got a blood clot. And right now, uh, we're just trying to find out if she has an autoimmune disease. It was not a regular date don't realize the gifts right in front of you till you realize how temporary they are. It's just a regular uh, time with the parents until you find out that one of them has cancer. It's just a regular drink of water until you remember that many people across the world don't have access to clean water. It's just a regular drive to school until you have a year with no school or playgrounds and school takes place on Zoom. It's just a regular church service until you've done online church for a year. Nothing is regular. Everything is a gift. Nothing is mundane. Everything is magical. Over a year ago, I gave a sermon uh, about gratitude and uh, just this idea of noticing and capturing the gifts all around us in a, a a couple of months ago, a couple uh, from our church sent me an email and they said that they filled out the gratitude journal that we gave them together. And then this turned into a practice for them. And every night before bed, they, they tell each other what they're grateful for. They're becoming pros at noticing the gifts all around. I believe with all my heart, the most joyful people are masters of noticing. They're masters of awareness. They're infused with joy because everywhere they look, they see the gifts of God and they respond in gratefulness and worship. I believe this is what God wants of you, to not miss the beauty and the wonder right in front of you or dismiss it as regular. It's all a miracle. He wants us to open our eyes to the gifts around us realize that each one is a reason to worship and thank God and say we are filled with joy.
Now we're to the last section of Psalm 126, and we see this. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. So now we switch to the future tense, words of expectation and hope. Eugene Peterson said, joy is nurtured by anticipation. The Jewish, Jewish people have had their shares of trouble, uh, enslaved, put in captivity, oppressed, chased out of multiple lands. Uh, over and over again, they anticipated with hope that one day things will be restored and made right. Many songs over the years have been used to express uh, the aching and the longing for freedom in the midst of oppression. One of these songs uh, was formed uh, from several spiritual enslaved songs in America, and it eventually became known as We Shall Overcome. And Pete Seeger, a folk singer, uh, sang it at a civil rights rally, and Martin Luther King Jr. heard it, and he was haunted by it. It soon became a rally cry being sung at gatherings and in times of distress. And uh, Martin Luther King Jr. said this uh, about that song. We shall overcome. Deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome. No, I join hands so often with students and others behind jail bars singing it. We shall overcome. Sometimes we've had tears in our eyes when we joined together to sing it, but we still decided to sing it. We shall overcome. No, before this victory is won, some will have to get thrown in jail some more, but we shall overcome. Don't worry about us. Before the victory is won, some of us will lose jobs, but we shall overcome. Before the victory is won, even some will have to face physical death. Physical death is the price that some must pay to free their children from a permanent psychological death. Then nothing shall be more redemptive. We shall overcome. The mystical and magical practice of singing gave expression to the aching and the groaning for freedom. And they sang it like this. We shall overcome, we shall overcome, and we shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe. We shall overcome someday. Before he passed away, uh, John Lewis uh, said it was this song that kept him going in the struggle, especially when demonstrators were taken and imprisoned and beaten and they still sang this song in hope and anticipation. And now it's been sung in freedom protest uh, in different countries across the globe. For followers of Jesus, overcoming is vital to our tradition. We remember that not only that Christ gave himself for us, but his physical death was not the end. And Jesus came up to Mary Magdalene and she was weeping at his tomb. And he said, why are you crying? She explained to him the death of her beloved rabbi. And then he looked at her in the eyes and he called her name. Instantly, she realized it was Jesus and he had overcome death. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. The resurrection is a reminder we are a part of a kingdom of overcoming. We're more than conquerors through Christ who gave his strength. We remember we're a part of a kingdom of justice, proclaiming freedom to the captives, liberty to the broken. The resurrection remind us that, reminds us that the dead things in our world 
are not lost. They can be made new again. The dead things in our hearts, in our lives, in our relationships, in our careers can be made alive again. Hope is not lost. It's not dead. Hope is alive. We ache for justice. We ache for fullness and restoration. And it's hard to put those deep aches and groanings into words. So we sing. We sing in hope. We sing in joy. We remember God for what he has done, what he's doing in this moment, and what he will do for eternity. So now we are going to respond by singing in hope for this God who overcomes. Joy is made up. Open your heart and 
This is the sound. This is the sound. This is the sound of jubilee.
Thanks for worshiping with us today. Uh, I hope this has been encouraging for you. I know it has been for me as we chase joy instead of pursuing happiness that is fleeting and that our world pursues. My hope is that you would remember all that God has done for you and for me. As you remember your past, uh, that you would have joy in remembrance of all that God has done. And that you would have joy in awareness that he is uh, right here with you in each moment. Each moment is worthy of praise uh, because of all God is doing. And that you would have joy and expectation that whatever you're going through, whatever you're aching and you're groaning and your pain is, that there is hope in the God who overcomes. So uh, grace and peace to you, my friend.